If you haven't already heard, there's a huge legal battle between Liv and the PGA Tour, and it's messy. Liv has just asked for any proof of communication that the PGA Tour had with golfers, media companies, sponsors, and other entities about the former. Anthony Kim is getting dragged into this whole thing because his name is part of the evidence. Stay tuned as we look at everything that went down. First up, how did Kim get dragged into this whole mess? Now, it's so surprising for Anthony Kim to be caught up in this whole feud between the two golf tours because he retired from playing back in 2012, and that's more than a decade ago. This hasn't stopped Liv, though. As far as the rumors go, they were contacting golfers who haven't been active for a long time to join them, including Kim. It could be for managerial positions or to get them to play again, but things seem very unclear at this point. After all, everything is only a rumor for now. The list acquired by the court had over 200 names of those who had been in communication with the PGA Tour. This doesn't necessarily mean that these people discussed the downsides of Liv Golf with the PGA Tour, but it tells us one thing, these are the most relevant people in the golf world and the divide it's facing now. Let's talk about why Kim's name is on that list. According to the court documents submitted by the PGA Tour, Anthony Kim was just one of the few players out of the 179 other players and organizations who discussed live golf with the PGA Tour. We don't know exactly what they discussed, just that there were talks. All these conversations started a while ago, back in September 2019. Liv's main problem is this, they think the PGA Tour has been actively working working against the breakaway golf circuit and trying to sabotage it internally and externally. Even though officials from the PGA Tour said that players are independent contractors, their stances don't necessarily reflect the tours. Still, the math isn't adding up because why would the tour engage in this correspondence in the first place? People have speculated that Kim hasn't returned to golf because he received a multi-million dollar paycheck after his injury. Even though Kim hasn't gone back to playing golf, there are still a lot of players who have been in communication with the PGA Tour about Liv. Many of these players even left the tour to join Liv Golf. It seems Liv proved what they set out to do by getting the PGA Tour to submit these documents containing details of all the communications in court. Even though the tour argued that other players and organizations don't reflect their views, things aren't looking up now. What's surprising is that while many players have communicated with the tour, many of them actually left for Liv, followed by, why is this whole thing so complicated? As we said at the beginning of this video, this whole thing is a mess, and the legal technicalities mean things will only get worse and messier. A lawsuit was filed a few months ago, and these lawsuits between big corporations last several months, some even years. In the most recent legal filing, Liv asked for these documents from the PGA Tour. Liv and the PGA Tour entered their joint statements, telling the courts their legal positions regarding a discovery dispute. If you're confused, we'll understand that in just a bit. They clarified where they stand about certain things as the lawsuit continues, specifically with Liv requesting all these records of communications between golf officials and executives. Now, there's a huge debate about what extent Liv is entitled to access the information from the PGA Tour. At first, Liv wanted all the records records of every communication that the PGA Tour may have had with anybody and everybody about the breakaway circuit. Of course, the PGA Tour objected to this whole thing because it would be too burdensome. They said it was impossible because how on earth would they release all this information? But this has just made the lawsuit between the two get more complicated as the day goes by, moving on to what they agreed on. Of course, it will not be easy for the PGA Tour to dig into all their records and release all the information about their correspondence with people in the golf world. The Tour agreed on certain terms, though and said there should be a limit on the inquiry, especially when it comes to people speaking on behalf of the tour. They also said that the names of people who had been part of those conversations about Live Golf would be limited. Even after these terms have been agreed upon by the two parties, the list is pretty long. There are many people on this infamous list, from golf executives to agencies, broadcasters, sponsors, vendors, and even golfers, 200 to be exact. Jack Nicklaus was another golfer whose name was on the list, and he's making headlines just like Anthony Kim, even though both players haven't been on the golf scene for a while. The whole situation got sticky fast, and at this point, both Live Golf and the PGA Tour's players seem pretty sick of everything. Let's hope everything clears up soon, and golf can go back to the normal way it used to be. Coming up, this whole thing isn't ending as soon as we thought it would. Golf is a high-profile sport, and when you think of the sports giants feuding in the court, one thing's for sure, this isn't ending anytime soon. The lawsuit started just a few weeks ago, but many proceedings will continue until 2024. 
before. That's like a long time. The initial antitrust court dates, as decided by the San Jose court, are going to be in July 2023. Here, the summary judgment will be announced, and everyone thinks the tour will ask the court to dismiss the case. As for the trial, it is expected to begin on the 8th of January 2024. As you can probably tell, the whole thing has been dragged out for a long time, but not on purpose. Legal procedures are usually really, really long. Multiple lawsuits are also going on simultaneously, and it looks like things will get more complicated as time goes on. A few days ago, the PGA Tour filed another against Saudi Arabia's public investment fund. They want to do this because they want to convince the courts to depose Governor Yasir al rumayan and get him to produce documents related to Live Golf and how it runs. What the tour also hopes to accomplish from this is getting the PIF to give away more information to the attorneys of the PGA Tour through discovery. Sounds like a solid plan. Let's look at where things stand for Kim and the other players. The two giants in the world of golf are feuding right now, and things went downhill quickly because other prominent people and organizations in the world of golf got involved. From name dropping to appearing in court, everything seems pretty tricky right now. Many players who left the PGA Tour for Live Golf even got together to file a lawsuit, but then they withdrew it. With both of their season's tournaments over, they can now focus on the legalities of everything, but this puts the players in a difficult position. Both tours struggle to find common ground, and the PGA Tour still thinks they're superior. If players join Live, they're securing that bag, but if players stay with the PGA Tour, they're preserving the prestige of golf, one of the most distinguished sports. They don't have to choose immediately or pick sides right now either. They have until before next season starts. Finally, where do the two rival tours stand right now? Live Golf tournaments aren't aired on major television channels, while the PGA Tour has dealt with some major ones. Live isn't recognized by the golf world rankings either, and players who left the tour suffered a drop in their rankings. Most players who have joined Live have long contacts with huge payouts, so if things don't work out, they're still stuck there for a while. But this doesn't mean that Live is giving up. They've been in talks with the World Golf Rankings, and they've been trying to negotiate a deal with Fox News to air their tournaments. If there's one thing we know about Live, they have deep pockets, which means that they're not backing down. The new rival tour, at one point, even tried to get the PGA Tour to collaborate with them, but this didn't work out so well. Our best bet as viewers is that this legal battle is over as soon as possible, and we can get back to enjoying golf without all the politics. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think about this antitrust lawsuit? Do you think it's fair that many retired golfers like Anthony Kim got dragged into it? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you at the next one.